S. Epatha Merkerson. I'm an actor and a filmmaker. I started acting actually probably in junior high school and uh, continued through high school and I have a Bachelor of Fine Art and Theater performance. I came to ABFF because uh, my producing partner and I have uh, our first film. It's been, uh, we submitted it and we're in competition for a documentary film. It's called, it's called The Contradictions of Fairhope. <laughs> and uh, it's a film about an organization that was created in 1888 uh, Benevolent Society, the Fairhope Benevolent Society, and its journey from 1888 to the present day. My producing partner, Raquel Metcalf, who is also co-director and writer of the project, it's really, it surrounds his family and where they live in Fawnsdale, Alabama. His grandmother is a member of this Fairhope Benevolent Society. She's 99 years old and she's been a member since she was 17. So she was really our inspiration in starting the project. I think the main challenges were the, was the fact that this is our first film. So a lot of it we were learning as we go. Um, I think Fawnsdale, Alabama in the summer uh, can be difficult to shoot in. It's very hot. But by and large, I think we had, um, we had so much encouragement and cooperation from the interviews that we did um, that we were able to put our story together from the beginning of the Benevolent Society, like I said, to the present day. As an actor, uh, I think it's important that you read, um, and probably for a filmmaker as well. Reading allows you, as an actor, it allows you to see different characters in your mind. As you read, you can create the character that, that's in the story. Um, so I always think it's important for young actors to read. And then as you're reading, as a filmmaker, you might find a story that you'd like to put on film. So it works for, for both. I, reading is so important. Diana Sands, Ruby D, Mary Alice, Barbara Montgomery, uh, Diane Carroll. Uh, there are quite a few. Freddie Washington from way back in the day. I think as a young woman, I remember seeing her in a production of Imitation of Life, which is an incredible film. Um, so those are the actresses that inspired me. I certainly think I have a responsibility. I think there are worse things to be a uh, role model, you know what I mean? Um, I have a solid body of work that hopefully young women will see and appreciate the trajectory that my career took. Um, yeah, there are, there are worse things to be, I think. So a role model is, that's okay with me. Uh, I'd like to believe that uh, I'm trying to continually create and recreate myself. Um, I certainly, as I said, have a body of work that people can turn to and um, decide what my legacy might be, but I think I'm still working on it, actually. I think it's very important that we tell our own stories. Who can tell them best? Uh, and that's, that's us. And one of the things that we worked very hard on with this film was the storyline. Raquel Metcalf wrote such an incredible arc for this film and it was our duty to tell the story um, the way we saw it from historical accounts um, but to tell a story about us that I didn't know about actually. Um, and I think that was one of the things that we learned really from this film was there's so much about our history that we don't know. So it's important that we try to pass it on. Um, we don't talk anymore like we used to. 
people aren't passing stories down and that literally is where most of our history lies. It lies in people telling stories. We now have this opportunity to take those stories and put them on film. We have this equipment that we can use so that our stories are a part of, become a part of the history of our, and our young people have an opportunity to learn from our history. And that makes you stronger. You, you got to know where you come from to know where you're going to go. And for me, that's been the, the pride that I've felt from making this film. I'm affiliated with an organization called Cancer Care. Uh, it, it's a, a resource organization. And um, I've been affiliated with them for probably about 15, 10 or 15 years now. I lost two of my dearest friends to lung cancer. My sister is a lung cancer survivor. I'm an ex-smoker. Um, and specifically, a lot of the things that I do have a black focus because I want young women and young men to look at me and say, you know, this is what she's doing, this is what she's focusing on. And there is a high rate of cancer in African American communities. And one of them is preventable, preventable and that's lung cancer. Um, and, and you don't have to be a smoker to get lung cancer, but lung cancer comes from smoking. Um, and it's important that we let our kids know that this is a disease that is preventable. And uh, so it's my, that, that is my responsibility. If I have one huge responsibility living in this world is to let people know the, um, that smoking uh, is unhealthy and um, there's so many of our kids that are smoking. So cancer care, that would be my main, the main organization. I am a resident of Harlem. I've been a, a resident of Harlem since the late 70s. I've lived all over Harlem though. Not just, I thought I was a sedentary person, but I'm not. I've moved all around 7th Avenue, 110th, 157th, Riverside Drive. I love Harlem. Well, there's a good part of it and there's a negative part of it. The good part is that there are now grocery stores and yeah, you know, I just finished watching Soul Junkies too, talking about black folks having access to food. And so there are now really good markets that are coming uptown. There are restaurants that are coming uptown. So that means that our people have access to better produce and meats and so forth. The, the, out, the, the negative side of it is that we're losing one of our historical bases uh, because it's becoming gentrified. When I started, you know, there weren't very many people who were locking. Probably the only person was Whoopi Goldberg, really. And, um, you know, I always felt that as an actor I could wear a wig, that the character can be determined by, it shouldn't be determined, first of all, by hair, but if it's a character that's in the 60s and she did the pops and so forth, then you can wear wigs. But I, I prefer natural hair. So, yeah, it, it has been uh, a hazard sometimes for me. Uh, we're here at the, in Miami at the uh, American Black Film Festival where our film, The Contradictions of Fairhope, uh, is screening and we are in competition for a documentary. And we're very excited to be here. The festival is incredible. Uh, it is uh, uh, a great honor for our film to be a part of the festival. And uh, we're looking forward to um, our life with this film. Um, we're going to do a little, um, we're going into schools with it. The film is going into schools. We're going to be screening at Morehouse. We're going to screen at Hampton. Uh, there'll be a, a curriculum that will be written for the film so that it, students can follow it and learn the history of the film, how we made the film, and the, about the history from, civil, uh, from emancipation all the way through civil rights. There have been this part of our history that's missing, and that's what our film focuses on how we got from emancipation to civil rights and to today. 
Um, so I'm really proud that we're here.